Hello everybody and welcome back to a blind commentary of Death Parades, episode Death Parade, episode two. Um, yeah. So if you're not well, if you don't want to see the um just the episode commentary, you can click somewhere around here. There should be a picture with an annotation. I think there. There's a picture with an annotation, or rather the ending, you know, ending part there, with the annotation somewhere similar. So that's the time code, you know, that should be an annotation, click there. Right ho! So yeah, it's been a whole long time since I continued Death Parade. Like a really long time. So I just suppose it'll be fun to continue. I still remember everything that happened, but yeah. Let's just immediately get to it. As the and um, by the way, I will be skipping some intros for some series, and the explanation here will be given quickly. That's because those intros are copyrighted and they create some problems for me in the, well, with YouTube. But fortunately though, this um, Death Parade intro is not one of those. Oh yeah, we get the background of the mysterious black-haired woman, I guess. Or something around about her? More about her, at the very least. And oh, that I certainly will... ...will appreciate. Okay. Oh man. Oh man, this is one of my favorite intros, so... Oh yeah! This is only like a minute long intro though, so there's... No reason to actually... Well, actually there would be a reason to skip this, but... <clears throat> I freaking just enjoy this intro so much. This intro is like so amazing. Jeez, I, re I really freaking and love that intro. It's so, f so good. Oh man, it's very intriguing. Intriguing that she like came to the afterlife without actually knowing her name. Like, why is she even there? Hmm. Interesting, I say. I'd say. She's intrigued. She's indeed intriguing us. She is clearly a human, though. What is her purpose there? Also, I do wonder why she came with that mini top, but whatever. I don't know. Um. Like, if I remember correctly, the male's, male male's main character's name De Dekim, I think. Um, they have cool eyes. Oh, I was surprised. Yeah, Dekim. I remember. Ah, oh, it's a miracle I remembered something. That's a lot of flaws, I think. Domo. 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 Itte rasemase. Oh. 
Oh man, this looks beautiful. Like, just all the backgrounds are amazing. Look really, they look really nice. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop here for a second because that background music is such so cool. Like the background music already is really, really. I forgot how. Like it's so good. Like it's a nice little um postmodern jazz. そのその中に見せるあらゆる人間性それと人生の記憶をもとに死者に最低を下す私たちは最低者なのおう最低だ。That's <笑> Okay. パパパって感じ。要はそうまとみたいなもん。わかる。なんとなく。あの、私は。ちょっと待って。クイーン。いいよ。はいはい。よく転送。イン。that's interesting. I'll try to not pause during the video, but or the episode rather. But well, that's certainly quite interesting. あの。うん。私はここで何をするの？な、ごめん。忘れてた。お手伝いさん。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。ここよ。
Fia? Fia, Fia. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling I won't be able to comment during this show on much. <laughs> but it'll be a lot more interesting to actually compile the, my thoughts in the scene-by-scene -scene analysis as well in the ending thoughts in general. That'll probably be the most entertaining part here. Oh. <laughs> I didn't actually even... That's so questionable. Morally questionable. Yeah, that... I'm, hmm. I completely forgot how messed up this is. Hmm. この<笑> That looks beautiful. やっぱり。わざとなの。人間って面白いわ。ああ、<笑> That's interesting. I mean, sorry, but I can't comment during the episode that much. Oh, yeah. Nice dot bot there. That's an interesting perspective between blue and red. マチコ様の勝利です。これにてゲームは終了となります。お二人ともあちらへお越しください。ちょっと待て。頼む。ちょっと待ってくれ。無駄よ。何もう。すべて無駄なの。マチコ。I <笑> I forgot how good the emotions are shown on their face. A bit too exaggerated though, but that's what I do as well. So. Hmm. Hmm. 
Oh god, their faces are so twisted already. Actually, this fits incredibly well with Higurashi. <laughs> Just following Higurashi like this is... Ah, pretty nice, I think. うん。よろしくお願いします。あなたの言う通りよ。私にはね、他に好きな人がいるの。ふん。だって当然でしょ。誰があなたみたいな人を好きになると思う? <笑> Yeah, here it becomes pretty obvious. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's always quite intriguing. お疲れさん。ありがとうございます。いかがでしたか。最悪。全部慣れるわ。It's better not to lose the emotion of it being awful だ。だかしの魂を転生させて、マチコの方は興味ね。はい。そうなんだ。あの、教えてほしいことがあるんだけど。つまり、マチコさんには別の相手がいた。はい。ふん。納得がいかないってか。きっとそれ一度きりの過ちってやつじゃないかな。なぜそう思うのですか。かん。それで。<笑><笑> ずっと引っかかってて。お腹の子は高橋さんの子だと私は思う。しかし、ご本人が違うとおっしゃっていましたが、マチコさんすごく悲しそうに言ってた。きっと嘘をついたんだと思う。嘘。何のためにその必要があ
Oh, that's incredible! Oh, hey, look, a background musician. Oh my god! Oh my god! Um. Oh. <laughs> Hmm. Quite interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that's inter um Okay. Yeah. I, I purposefully have avoided now to talk talking about this so.幸せ。幸せ。はい。まだまだだ。これからよろしくお願いいたします。こちらこそ。あと、先ほどは失礼いたしました。え私は生を全うした人間を尊敬しています。今回は最低者として失格です。わあ、オッケー。インクレディブル。オーマン、ダッツ。何でしょう。ああ
I really do enjoy this. It, it's really freaking amazing. But that will be for the immediate thoughts. Like, I'm, it's very amazing and it holds a lot of potential, especially considering the interaction between the black-haired woman and the um, Dekin, especially. And considering that they'll be working together, that's very important, so I very much... I see a lot of promise in the future, and it certainly is, seems to be a very entertaining psychological series, so... They'll be good looking going forward. Then scene by scene analysis. Um, there's not much in this prologue except that the blackhead girl arrived there, and that's nice. Um, hey, what? Was there that book in the opening as well? That's interesting. Okay. So it's interesting that uh, we have shown, they are shown like, I, I presume most of those people are, or that the people on that train are like Arbiters as well. So it's very clear that even though they exist beyond time and space, that time may go slower for them. I, I think they, they just exist with the time, same time and space, but, or rather not in the same space at least, but like that time isn't, goes very relatively close to ours, or the real world. It seems interesting that they have so many Arbiters. Actually, this is considerably quite, quite a few, uh, just very few, considering how many people die in the world daily, so... It's actually very interesting that we get to see more Arbiters and that they are clearly different from each other. And uh, I kind of find that intri intriguing, as this is clearly an example of the Christian belief of purgatory come, come to life in a sort of a different manner. However, it comes more closer to the uh, Buddhist, or the, is it Buddhist? Oh god, I can't remember exactly. Anyway, the reincarnation um, belief that, or rather, closer, closer resembling karma. Oh gosh, I can't remember. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Those, um, that belief in that the soul is reborn in the next life, and the goal of the goal of the life of your whole cycle of rebirth is to break free from the rebirth. But in this version, if you break away from the, you want to continue being reborn, as that's a good thing. And if you are, if you fail, you are lost forever instead of transcending spirituality. It's an interesting concept on that. Um, and also, it's kind of strange to see that these the buildings are actually worn down somewhat, and they are actually suffered from they suffer from from time. That's intriguing. I wonder who that like. Um, I don't know. I can remember, Pillboy. I can't remember the name of the elevator uh, user. Whatever. It's kind of interesting. But here, when they come to the actual floor, it's actually very well done. Um, it's interesting to see that this, it's also subject to like real life corrosion and the effects of time on buildings. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. And all, also the whole bar thing. It's kind of very interesting, I'd say. It's a nice setting though, looks like a real nice bar, like really high class one, I'd prefer to be there. I'd really like to visit something like that. And then this whole exchange that the black haired woman is actually um, recruited into the assistant without actually giving that much information, she plays a very interesting role, but I will talk about that later in the whole outro section. Um, but it's actually kind of an interesting recruitment scene, and she doesn't actually panic that much, considering that she's dead. It's interesting. Um, it's kind of funny that actually, Dick, like, the Arbiters apparently are, like, living things, and they, or rather, maybe living, kinda, in a way, that they have hobbies. That's unusual, to say the least, and they really do kind of break the mold of the Grim Reaper as we know it. Um, I don't know what to make of it, but it certainly is an interesting ap aspect to the whole series, so... Then the fact that they are sho that the black-haired woman is recruited by showing the process, like, this, in this way, manner, like, directly showing it to her. It's an interesting way, and certainly works, and it's very, um, 
clear that the process is very clearly shown to her without having her medal do much in there. Um, yeah, when we get the second aspect that the, the uh, this is actually just a is a more of a building that there are some pathways around it and it's not just some rooms floating in the darkness, you know. Uh, that's interesting. I, the, the whole series is very interesting so far, and I am very much enjoying it. So, uh, we already knew about this dart scene, and this is just an explanation of. Actually, those were mannequins. Yeah, good. Um, it's very interesting to see her reactions as she is very much the human aspect of the show. So, it's kind of good that we get to see her reactions anyway. The this scene is handled pretty well, though. Show um, how actually. She seems a bit too distant, in my opinion, like... I don't know how relatable she would be, considering that she doesn't react to things all that much, but it's more that she reacts very subtly, and that's very interesting. I, I mean, I, I keep saying interesting. Word of the day is interesting. So... So, um... It's kind of good, I think. I, I think it's just fine that she is more of a calm person. And this whole explanation of the rebirth actually is. I'm not gonna say interesting this time, as it's pretty obvious it's just a reincarnation myth flipped upside down, kind of. It's sort of a different mythology, and it certainly holds promise, so. <coughs> Forward. This whole scene here. We can clearly see that she is just like more human than the Arbiters and that she is judging them more humanely, shall we say. And then this whole after conversation here really clearly handles the issue well that the Arbiters are missing a human element and that is why she is just a godsend gift here. So that's a very nice fact I think. Um, I really like how the the uh, that this girl, lady arbiter, woman arbiter, whose name we didn't learn. Uh, Nona. Yeah, Nona is actually like she's very intimidating and she's clearly very different from Dekin. It's it's cool that the arbiters are different, but they were probably as varied as normal human beings. And that they are clearly still like almost living beings, like kind of in a way though. I wonder if we'll get an explanation of their uh, physiology later. And then this whole ending judgment here is kind of nice. And it also very well proposes their um, um, go existence there and promises that they're. Um, them working together will be at, le at least promising, so... And it has some potential to be very fruit uh, fruitful. It'll have fruits, uh, whatever. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. End of the scene by scene. So, we'll move on to... Ending thoughts. Um... Let's start off with the easy one, and that is the sound design. So, intro is freaking amazing. I love the intro in every regard, as the both of the music is just blatantly amazing and blood pumpingly awesome. And it fits the visuals so perfectly, it's very enjoyable, I must say. Uh, the intro is amazing. It's one of the best intros I've ever seen, if not the best. I don't know, Tank 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 might go over above that, but yeah. The outro, however, left me kind of wanting more, but it fits the bill for the outro very well, as it is very calm, kind of, in a way. It's a calm kind of rock music, in a different way. Or rather, rather it's very melancholic, should I say. So I clearly do, I very much do like how it's done, but it's not something that I'm very entertained by. Like, the intro song is something, it's my ringtone currently, so... And really do like it. The voice actors... I have nothing 
especially special to say about anybody, but Dickin is just very I don't know, there's something mysterious about his inflections that he shows very, very uh, slight emotions. Like, otherwise he's very um, uh, mellow and there's nothing, there's really no emotion in his voice. I can't really find the word that I'm looking for, but he's very stone cold, but there is clearly some emotion behind him and that he clearly is still a normal being though as stated he has an amazing poker face so he's his voice actor i think suits him well as it very well fits the role of the arbiter i think so that's cool and i really do appreciate that the black haired woman is fine and nona is fine and there so far there uh we the um, pair we saw were just fine, I think. And the uh, not shuffle. I can't really think of the mm, whatever. The guy who operated the elevator was also fine. <sighs> then let's talk about the animation, as the animation is very, very nice. It's it looks really good. It has this very realistic look with very little like it's they, like the closest comparison I can actually make is with Higurashi, although this is very much more realistic. But the perspective when you know the metaphorical um, feces hit the metaphorical fan, um, they the characters' faces get all twisted and when they go insane, so to say, or they get mad they really get, like, their faces distort, distort so inhumanely, and it looks very disgusting in a way. It's a little fact that, it's a little um, detail that I can easily compare to Higurashi's, the famous Higurashi face, in a way. But in a good way, like, even though the animation is a lot better overall, and the characters are very realistic, but those little inhumane moments when they go insane is something I very much like. Overall, the whole aesthetic looks very realistic and it looks kind of, it looks pretty good, I think. It fits the series kind of well and it gives it this very unique look. Like it it creates the afterlife in a very different manner that we'll see that I haven't seen really all that much. So um, I like that, I think. It's an inter interesting aspect. And yes, I said interesting once more. Yeah, I, I, I kind of dig it. It's cool. It's cool. Um, the animation is pretty freaking amazing overall. I just talked about the art design instead, but whatever. And then we're going to have to talk about the big thing. And that is the whole story aspect. This will be more focused on the black-haired woman during this episode, as I think I talked about the whole <coughs> aspect in the first episode. Though I will be crossing it here briefly, as it has been a few months since that. I, first off, I do like the whole aspect of the afterlife reincarnation thing. Decided kind of a kind of using a game to force the people to show their true colors. Well, that is something I very much enjoy, appreciate as a fact, since um, it does seem realistic, and it's it makes it very intriguing to see like how people react when they are losing, and they think they are losing their lives, which they have already lost, and how it'll make them react, and that sort of, I don't know, I like it. And ho that whole um, ending scene with Nona, Nina, Nona, whatever, her, showed that human, humans are not as simple as that and they can't be judged simply with that. As I believe that the girl, should, the woman who was judged, should have actually been um, reborn as she was clearly... I really think that she was fine. I think. 
And that's where we get to the black haired woman as she is clearly the template for us viewers to jump into the fray and kind of visualize ourselves as her. Although my boobs aren't that big, but um, yeah. It's an interesting way to bring the human aspect to the whole show and something that we can uh, emphasize with uh, as humans are uh, apparently very distinctly different from the others and they bring this human decisive judgment element that the others clearly don't possess and it does color the show in a different manner as it's not just about arbiters judging people but it's more so about how different things look from the outside con compared to how it actually can be judged with human emotion. It's an interesting aspect, oh god I said it again, it's an interesting aspect that I really feel like gives the show its true nature and that is something I'm very intrigued to see how they do this in the future. Oh wow I just spoke quite a bit. Uh, although I don't wonder like will she have will the black haired woman have any character in the future though like how meaningful is she, is he is she like does she have a background uh, like are the episodes completely centered around the pairs that walk in or is there some overarching story as so far we haven't seen that though the black haired woman clearly does present a possibility for it so it's interesting and I will, I very much will, am uh, hopeful to see that in the future. Um, uh, what else to say? All oh, right, I'm actually interested to see also how the arbiters play. Like, as they are distinct creatures and they have different personalities, I wonder how they'll play along and how many of them we'll see and whether they'll have any grudges against each other, as they are uh, clearly able to show emotion. Okay, the day word of the day is also clearly. Um, yeah, so I very much enjoy that aspect of the show. And it is something that I'm very much looking forward to seeing. Yes, the show will be very, very intriguing. I completely forgot to mention, I find it very nice that the arbiters are not without error and they do make mistakes and hopefully all up to in all on up to them in the future and it's something that they actually discuss in the episode and it's something that's a po clear possibility and i do enjoy that as it gives more of a reason for the human element to actually join in and it actually even presents the reason for the games in the first place you know because if they knew without error who was which of the two is always meant to be, or should uh, be reborn, there's no reason to play the games, and therefore there's no reason to have the show. So I kind of think it's actually kind of essential for the show that the arbiters are able to make mistakes. It's nice, it's just something I wanted to brought up, so this will be got in. Well, um, well with that being said, I think we're done here. So, I thank you all for joining me on this episode and this video. And please, do leave your opinions. What do you think about what I just, like, rambled on? <laughs> do you think that I'm this... Like, if you know the future, don't spoil it, please. But do you think there's any hint of truth behind it? Like, is there any possibility that it could be true? Could it be interesting? Is it something that might be... True or is it interesting at the very slightest? Then do you enjoy the show for those facts? And what do you think of the show overall? You know, for these two episodes that have been shown so far. Yeah. Without further ado, I thank you all very much for watching. Have a I'll stay awesome and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day. Ganamu out.